does your life really count? Do you make a difference to the people around you? That's what really matters. Gandhi had a purpose. His purpose was peace. He pursued that. Uh, Martin Luther King had a purpose, and that was for equality for his people, and he pursued that. Mother Teresa had a purpose, and hers was for love for others. They become great people because they pursued their purpose. And you can become great too as long as you pursue your destiny, your purpose. And I believe you are called to build this business. You're not here by accident. Right? And this business is to equip you to become everything that you are designed to become. And uh, whether your, your destiny ultimately lies in this business or not is irrelevant. You are here at this point of time in your life to be equipped and prepared. And for, for most of you, it is to build a huge business in this business and touch a lot of people's lives. But you have a responsibility to reach out and lay hold of that responsibility and say, I'll take it and I'll do it. And it's not necessarily going to be all that easy. It's not a bed of roses, but it will be worth it. It will give you a deep uh, fulfilment and satisfaction in your life. You can live a life of luxury and ease and you'll be restless and unhappy for the rest of your life if that's not your, your destiny and purpose. Do you understand that? So you search, it's important for your happiness that you search out what your will and purpose is. When you've discovered you have a purpose in your life, you get a conviction about it, don't you? Perhaps you've got a conviction that you're going diamond. If you have a conviction for anything, on my left hand I have conviction, in my right hand I have passion. Left hand and right hand, it goes together. You see people that have not got a, con have not got a passion, that's because they have no conviction. Well, get a conviction about the business. Some, I know some people need to get a conviction about their marriage. And then they'll get passionate about it. They'll live a happy life. You know? And a lot of us, I guess, we can't even get convicted enough about our partner to even marry them. Well, there's a risk there that you'll never have a passionate relationship. So it's very, very important to live a life of conviction and passion because it brings joy and happiness. So do you sense that you were meant for something greater than where you're at? You know, sometimes I used to sense I was, I was meant to do more than just squeeze cows for a living. <laughs> Didn't have to be really that discerning to figure it out. And, uh, and, but, and you've probably, you can probably, sometimes you can feel that you're meant to be, you're meant to build empires and create, do great things and touch people's lives, you know, in, in moments of inspiration. And that's your destiny calling you. Listen to it. It's like a gentle breeze. And if you don't listen, you won't hear. But it, regularly it calls. But if you get too busy, you won't recognise the call. And it will guide you and direct you to where you're meant to go. Some people come to me and they say, well, I'm just not sure where my destiny lies. Well, what do you love doing? Because what you love doing directs you to where your destiny lies. You know? And that's so you follow what you love. Someone said it's a box of chocolates. And uh, that's not a whole, the whole truth, though, is it? Because you get to choose the chocolates. So many people take the cards that life or fate deals them. You don't have to take all the cards. You don't have to eat all the chocolates in the box. You get to choose the chocolates. And basically what that comes down to is how you, how you deal with the circumstances in your life. Learn to deal with the circumstances. Learn to respond to the circumstances Okay, don't become a slave to them. There's an old proverb which says, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favour to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. And for you people, this is your chance. We live on the edge of a major change in history, world history. This is your chance. Time and chance refers to that moment in your life when you stand on the edge of your chance of opportunity to fulfil your destiny. And I believe this is your chance to fulfil your destiny. Some of you will recognise it, some of you will not. It is not fate, nor is it luck, it is design. That's why you're here, that's why you're listening. As you go to build this business to fulfil your destiny, you'll come up against difficulties and trials. And you want to learn to be really thankful for them because they're the very things that make you, they equip you to become a better leader and a greater person. So many people 
uh, reject the, le- the teaching that comes through um, persecution and difficulties. The very things that make you. We've been through lots of valleys and had lots of mountaintop experiences. And I know when we went diamond, we looked at it, I used to complain, thought we were really hard done by the difficulties we went through because other people didn't go through the tough times we went through. We thought that wasn't fair. But when we went through the valley and, and climbed the mountain on the other side and went down, we looked back and it was the valleys that made us. It was in the valleys that our character w- was chiselled out and gave us that strength to persist and become so that we can have. And it's exactly the same for you. I feel sorry for you if you're not going through any valleys because you're not being developed. I'm going to take a few risks and uh, learn to... Learn to uh, be thankful for the, the persecution, the trials, and the difficulties that you go through. It's the very makings of you. It develops staying power and it gives you an example to others. It makes you an example to others. If you're going to lead others, you have to be an example. You have to get through the valleys to lead others through. You can't point to the valley and tell them you've got to go through and get on the other side. You've got to go through it and lead them through. That's why you, when you're going through difficult times, you must win because others are following you and they're watching you. Nelson Mandela emerged after 27 years in prison and he became the leader of his nation. Isn't that a great example? Could have given up. That was his time and his chance to fulfil his destiny after 27 years of being in jail. Martin Luther King had a dream and his dream went on and outlived him. My good friend Max Hunt, who was an emerald in this business, had a dream. and His dream continues to live on after he's passed away and his business continues to grow and explode at great rates. And his dream outlives him. Right? And that's really great. Your dream will outlive you if you have a worthwhile dream. I believe this business is part of your destiny to be fulfilled and you're meant to become so you can have. And therefore, you have collided with your chance to achieve your destiny with this business and so uh, historically if you understand the S curve and you'll find it in Dexter's manual we've spent most of our lives 13 years in the business on the flat part of the S however we're now right on the curve on the S curve and you will have you will have probably seen the quotations in magazines from economists uh, outside our industry stating that they're expecting that while we have a one percent uh, market share as far as retail dollars go with the in-home shopping business, they are expecting by the end of next year that the retail dollar from in-home shopping will amount to 10%. When they look at the players that are going to enter the market and the, and the players that are in the in-home shopping market, their intentions to, uh, uh, in the future to expand their markets, it appears that we will, we will reach 10% market share. For those of you that know your history, that should be absolutely exciting for you because there is a trigger on the S-curve which causes all products to go vertical. And that trigger is called 10% market share. Right. So sometime next year we're expected to pass that trigger, to hit that trigger, and in-home shopping will go absolutely ballistic. That means the herd will recognise that this is where it's at and they'll come stampeding down towards us wanting to get in this business because we're the market leaders. We are a generation in front of our competitors. We have not got any competition. So as we stand at this point in history, on the, at this point on the S-curve, you people are in a very fortunate uh, position to be here in this business right now. That's exciting, isn't it? And uh, you'll find that the business will grow beyond your wildest expectations. So it's a good time to be in the business. So we have a, a saying on the farm, make hay while the sun shines. All right, and the, so as it turns and goes vertical, work as hard as you can to maximise uh, that advantage, that the time in history. A couple other things I want to talk to you about is uh, about what goes on in your life. Now, are you, are you changing your surroundings? And we have a chance to do that. As we, as we go vertical on this S-curve with the in-home shopping business, or are you being controlled by them? Are you being controlled by what your boss says, your bank manager says, or the government, or perhaps your mother-in-law? But you can either be conforming to your circumstances or you can be transforming. And it's important that you become a transformer. And we intend to transform society with in-home shopping, don't we? 
Well, that's the chance that we have. This is your chance and this is your time. Seize the day. Well, it's a window of opportunity you have. You need to seize the day. Well, it's the only time in history where in-home shopping will be at a 1% market share and about to launch to another point. As it, hits, as it goes through the 10% barrier and hits that trigger, right, it's, this, is, this is standard uh, marketing history, we know it will go vertical, almost vertical, to a point where it will level off at 90%. Now, if we're at 1% and we create so many millionaires in the world, can you imagine what we're going to do when it, when it gets to that 90% point? Right? We'll probably fly in formation with our Learjets <laughs> to meetings. That'll be fun, wouldn't it? So this is your chance. A man or a woman who misses his time and wastes their time in history is like a, a fish in a net, a fish that's caught in a cruel net. And what a fish does is it doesn't die straight away. It thrashes around and tries to get free till it dis dissipates all its energy and then it's taken from the net. And a lot of people miss their point, miss their chance, don't they, in history. And they thrash around doing other things right, until they run out of energy. And well, don't you miss your chance. Don't get caught in the cruel net. This is your chance. It may be your only chance. That's what you've got to remember. This may be your only chance. So the foundation of an incredible destiny that stands before you is an incredible dream. We need to focus on our dreams. We need to have huge dreams. We need to have wild dreams because you'll build this business if you have passion. Not if, you've got, if you're excited and when you share this concept, you will draw people to you. You need to have some wild dreams, some unrealistic dreams, some incredible dreams. You're never given the dreams without the gifts or the opportunities to achieve them. That would not be fair. Destiny doesn't give you the dreams without the opportunity or the, or the ability, the gifts. Every dream starts with a plan. And I hope you have a plan to become successful in this business. What is your plan for, for next month? <clears throat> what is your plan for next year? I hope you have that written out. I hope you've studied it and documented it and cancelled with your upline. And if you have no plan, you aren't going anywhere. You're just leaving your destiny to fate. You're just going to, life's going to hand you the chocolates. You're not going to pick the chocolates. All right? Just remember that. So plan out, plan out your future. Plan out your dreams. So remember, if you have an incredible dream, you will threaten people. The herd gets threatened by dreamers. And that is normal. In fact, if you aren't threatening Mr. Average at the moment, that means you're not dreaming big enough. That's a, I teach my kids that they'll be laughed at at school if they've got big dreams. When they get picked on, I tell them that's because they've got big dreams. Kids have all sort of, sorts of criticisms. They get used to the fact that being above average, you will always be criticised. So have big dreams, but understand that you will be criticised. Dreamers keep dreaming. They keep dreaming new dreams. You know, to keep developing new dreams. You all have locked up inside you some fabulous dreams that you don't even know exist yet. But you must keep dreaming. Keep, look, keep looking for those dreams. Dreamers understand other dreamers, don't they? You know, dreamers understand other dreamers. It's good to get in a room full of other dreamers, isn't it? Because you know, we understand each other. Dreamers have a will to live. They have a will to succeed and they have a will to, ser to serve. Everyone has the will to live because it, be it comes naturally. You don't have to try that one, it just comes naturally. Not so many of us have the will to succeed because there's a cost involved. Now, to build this business, if you've got a will to succeed, you're going to have to discipline yourself by to show the plan on a regular basis. We recommend at least 15 times a month, minimum. Now that takes discipline. You have to have a real will to succeed to sustain that sort of activity level. And to do a lot of plans in one month and do none the next is a waste of time because it's consistency and persistency that builds success. 
And the common man that attempts his business and you see that he fails, he fails not because of lack of skill and ability, he fails because of lack of persistence. And what I found the hardest thing in this business was to go on month after month after month with consistent activity. Run with the business, be consistent with your activity, but have balance in your life. That's a real trick.